Hello and welcome to Please Me. Last episode, Eve interviewed EA, a trauma recovery and addiction counselor, and he talked about the importance of mindset when it comes to recovery from any trauma. It was a powerful episode about overcoming, which each person must come to in their own way. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Eve is a licensed sexual health physical therapist on a mission to destigmatize conversations about sex. Please sit back and surrender to the pleasure of Please Me. Looking for the best live streaming or podcast recording site? Look no further than StreamYard. Get $10 off your first purchase. For podcast hosting, Buzzsprout is the absolute best option out there. Get $20 off your first purchase. Who's looking for a sexy date? SCC.com is the premier ethically non-monogamous dating site that also houses a wealth of information regarding sexuality and sexual health. Join the Please Me Health Collective on SCC.com and listen to Eve's free live webinars. Use code 37340 for a free trial membership. Maybe you are in the market for some sexy toys to add some spice to the bedroom. Check out the Organic Love and Link for the best online store for sex toys, lubes, and more. Are you in menopause, perimenopause, or postmenopause? I have found the absolute best products called Parlor Games. I use the estriol and progesterone topical creams and they have been game changers. Maybe you've listened to the show and want to be featured as a guest. Eve uses Podmatch to connect with new or potential guests. Reach out and begin the process today. Have any questions? Feel free to call me on the OWL app. Use code EH576472 for $10 free to use on the best networking app around. Give me a call. If you're experiencing sexual issues and need a physical therapy consultation or appointment, reach out to Eve and make an appointment on pleaseme.online. See all links and info in the show notes. Hello and welcome to Please Me, the podcast that aims to destigmatize conversations about sex by turning the sheets into our classroom. Today, I have the honor to welcome a guest named Marika McCamless, and she is going to be talking about her book, Naked in the Now, Juicy Practices for Getting Present. She has been featured in the Seattle Times, Women's Day, spirituality and health, and many, many others. And I could literally go on and on about her bio because she's done it all. But I just want to bring her on and welcome her to the podcast today. Hi, Marika. How are you today? Hi, Eve. So fun to be here. See your beautiful smile. Ah, thank you. Yours as well. (laughs) I'm so excited to be talking to you about your book today. And I love that you talk about the word naked. Uh, On another podcast, I had Lexi Silver on and we talked about nudity and how it's inherently not sexual. And a lot of people put sexuality onto just the act of being naked. And after all, it is how we all came into the world, you know, and it's just (laughs) our natural state of being. So can you tell me what that word means to you and why you chose to use it in the title of your book? (laughs) Yes, it was obviously a pretty intentional decision because what I kept on noticing is how uh, how much stigma is attached to the word and it has it comes with these feelings of fear and shame and vulnerability and I wanted to turn the tables around on that a little bit and remind us that it's also points to being present and passionate and juicy and we needn't fear be fear being naked we can we can embrace it as our as our natural way of being like you said and um yeah and i also noticed how you go out there in the world and there's it's sort of like there's an abundance of secret nakedness kind of you know, there's like a proliferation maybe of pornography back behind the scenes or what have you. And there's uh, the magazines all have, you know, very showy 
pictures of people, but we aren't willing to have that be front and center, that it's okay to be exactly as we are, authentic in our naked being and passionate. Anyway, that's a tiny touch of why I use the term naked. I, I love that and I completely agree with you. Um, and there are so many different layers that in your book you talk about when you use this word, right? Because peeling the away the layers of nakedness, quote unquote, and I'm talking not literally, like physically, but the layers of being naked emotionally and all of the other areas of your life where you can sort of peel those layers away. Do you want to touch upon that a little bit? Well, exactly. So the whole entire book is, of course, a metaphor, really, for being naked, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I want it to be a playful approach, uh, you know, easy approachable sort of topic. But I also want it to be a little bit tantalizing, a little bit me. So what, what the book is really about is about getting present. And what I like to say is that, you know, when we are uh, present, we are like lovers naked. And it's what I call being naked in the now. So the chapters take us on kind of this inner striptease. That's where we learn to fall in self fall in love with ourselves in the same way when you're just getting into a new relationship. We slip into a more comfortable way of being with ourselves. We um, go on an inner striptease where we peel away the layers of conditioning. Um, and then we work and then we bring it out. We learn how to heal our relationships, how to get juicier in our relationships, how to, you know, <clears throat> have date night be a sexy, crazy date night instead of going to the movies or something. <clears throat> so I touch on a little bit of it all. But the idea is to lose our armoring and our masks and be comfortable with ourselves as we are and with others that way too. Yes. And, you know, you have to be comfortable with yourself first before you can be comfortable with others. So really working yeah. on yourself is such a precursor to that. Um, totally. Yeah. And, um, and you know, society places all of this shame on nudity. And it's just really too bad um, because it, it really forms the way that we are. I ended up having this underlying body shame. And... Um, it, it was, it was insidious, um, you know, like I, I, and it, and it covered more than just the body. It was this constant feeling of not being pretty enough, not being thin enough, not being sexy enough, not being smart enough. There was this, I'm not enough component to it. And I should hide myself until I have presented the perfect exterior and then let that out when I can. So um, it takes some willingness to look at that and to, to determine if it's serving, if it's still serving you. So there might be a time when you need to sort of protect and armor yourself a little bit. Maybe you've experienced a traumatic event or something and you need to be in a very safe cocoon for a while. But there comes a time when you get to investigate, is this body shame, fear, is it, is it actually helping me now? Is all this protecting and armoring, or is it keeping me from having a juicier life, from having a fuller expression in life, from connecting more intimately with my partner? And I think I was telling you and I had a conversation and I was talking about how, so in, and in my book, I talk about this too. How do we move from feeling body shame and sort of just even if it's just a little bit of fear about our body um, to accepting and loving it. And for me, where this came to a head was at a clothing optional hot springs resort called Harbin Hot Springs. 
So okay. it's, it's, um, it's kind of like near Napa Valley in that part of California. And um, this time that I am thinking about when I went there, I was not a young woman anymore. I was not in my mid 40s even. I think I was probably in my mid 50s or young 50s. And I realized, I mean, I love going to Hot Springs Resort, but this one is, there's a lot of people there. And I realized that I was completely terrified to take my towel off and go into this beautiful, meditative, silent Hot Springs Resort because I was ashamed of my 50-year-old body. And it was, um, you know, I, I was... But as I stood there, I began actually looking at the other people and f sensing into the experience of the place. And I realized that everybody, nobody looked like the cover of a magazine cover. And everybody looked stunningly beautiful to me in their, in their imperfection. And I just for a second offered that to myself. So what happens when you do that is that all of the attention that's happening up in your head about how I look, do I look good enough? Am I sounding good enough? Am I whatever, you know, it is, um, drops down into the very present moment. And instead you explode in the feeling of the warm water, you know, what it actually feels feels like when that water caresses your body as you get in your shoulders drop and it it just feels so good and yes. I began to realize that these stories were in my head the other people were in their own little cocoons of sensual delight and it 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 was it had nothing that nobody was going, I was not being judged. They were not being judged. It was an opportunity to be present regardless of all of the baggage that I carried with me into that moment. So I called it being in a, and it's very humbling when you suddenly realize, wow, you know, how, how, much hubris is there in me worrying so much about my outward presentation that I forget to just be here in this moment that's so juicy and vital and yummy. And I realized it, that I was became, went from a state of fear to a state of what I call naked reverence. Yes. And I have a note to talk to you about that because... <laughs> That idea of naked reverence yeah. is so beautiful to me. And I can completely relate to you about, um, you know, being self-conscious about being naked. Um, I personally am, I consider myself a nudist and I love going to naked beaches. And for me, the sensation of swimming naked in the ocean is the most delicious and juicy sensation um when you're at the that you can experience at the beach um yes and um and i just absolutely love it and i love that you were able to look at everyone around you and see the beauty in every person yeah and i love that i am very um body positive and yeah. very inclusive of you know i just find beauty in everybody yeah. And I love that you were able to, at that moment, find that for yourself and allow yourself to, you know, go into that naked reverence for yourself. I mean, it is really connecting to your spirit and yeah. just letting the shell of you just be, you know? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Naked reverence. It's funny Absolutely. how just, just the words themselves bring you to a different state almost. Like what would that what would that feel like to be in a state of naked reverence? And all of a sudden, all your cells are alive. And it's it's about letting them be alive exactly as they are and not trying to control them. 
Work. And really the state of nakedness physically, and I'm not just talking about all of the other layers, but just physically being yeah. naked is very liberating, it you is. know, and just walking around naked and drinking your coffee in the morning naked <laughs> is very liberating, you know, yes. it's just, you know, there's nothing constricting you. It's very comfortable. And, you know, if yeah. you can get to that point of really being comfortable in your own body, it is really a beautiful thing. Yes. Let's let's talk about the concept of monogamy. And I talk about mm. monogamy a lot on this podcast. I personally consider myself uh, to be an ethically non-monogamous person, and I'm in an open relationship. Um, what I like to coin or term uh, a modern relationship, quote unquote, um, <laughs> where I, I don't limit myself to, you know, I mean, I am in a serious relationship, but I just don't limit myself in that way. Um, and so I want you to talk about your experience with monogamy and how it changed, you know, it changed you. Yeah. Um, so my, my backstory, so my, my backstory with my husband is that at about 10 years of marriage, I think, um, he had an affair with my best friend and that turned my world upside down. And, um, I basically, I realized I just, I didn't know what to trust, you know, how to proceed, what to do. Um, and, but we, we weren't really ready to separate. So what we looked at was, what would it take for us to go deeper from this place? Um, and, you know, we took a traditional route and we went and we saw a couples therapist who was wonderful, but we also took um, a non-traditional approach and we signed up for uh, uh, Margot Anand's year-long love and ecstasy training. So Margot Anand, for your listeners might not know her, but she's she's the author of the book called the art of sexual ecstasy and many others she's um her book came out probably and when this was happening to us so like 1994 or something like this 1995 uh so it's an, a little bit older book now anyway um that was at the time we had two kids three and six that was the journey that opened my mind, opened the doors to me in a completely different way. And it taught us the principles of meditation, the principles of acceptance. It taught us how to be juicier with each other. Um, so this, this year long training was like 10, no, three 10 day retreats. And then in between you would get together um, for one or two weekends a month with your regional group. Um, and what we decided because we decided that you, so you could participate in this retreat as what's called a free floater. And that would be somebody who would go from one partner to another to do the exercise or a deep diver. And we decided to participate as deep divers, which meant that we primarily um, used each other as our partners. There's a few exercises you do, you know, with the group or with others or whatever. But um, because we really were interested in getting deeper into that intimacy with each other while we were facing this difficult time. So what ended up happening during that during that training very early on was I began having flashbacks of childhood sexual trauma. So this was a whole nother level of, of shame around sex, shame around intimacy uh, that I really had not tapped into and until this setting allowed it to come up. Um, so one of the things that happened between my husband and I during that time was that that rekindled our trust and our intimacy was that he, he just 100% showed up for me as I was going through this very difficult terrain. Um, and 
what we began to discover is that when we were 100% present with each other, when we created time for that, so not um, half distracted, fitting it in between other things, but when we actually carved time in our life and in our day to be 100% present with each other, diving into the secrets of our life, diving into the things we never dared really talk about, just going in there, talking about your fantasies, your desires, your shame, your secrets that you never told anybody. Um, we began to become just much more intimate. And it, it, um, it forged the ground for we're going on 40 years now. Wow. So congratulations. That's incredible. Yeah, this is our 40 year anniversary this June. Wow. Yeah. And why it works, I think, is because of these foundations that we originally learned in that love and ecstasy training where you are just so intentionally present with one another. We carve out, we actually carve out time every day to be yes. physical with each other. Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next question, actually, yeah. because yeah. I think what you did and, you know, a lot of relationships will break up after this and they will not go into a quote unquote deep dive, right? Where yes. you're trying yes. to work on the issues that are separating you and the reasons why this sort of thing happened in the first place, right? And instead right. you met it head on and you decided to go deeper and you know what? It pulled up a whole lot of crap, right? Yeah. From your right. past. Totally. But all of that is so key in order to move forward and to be a healthier you. And, yes. you know, I know that for me, um, you know, I too have a history of um, sexual abuse as a child and um, and I had to work on all of that. I'm healing from that in order to get to where I am now on the other side of that where I can live abundantly. And um, and so kudos to you for not giving up on your relationship with your, the husband that you loved um, and, or that you do love. Obviously, 40 years is a really long time. Yeah. And congratulations for that. Um, but I would love to know what you do on a daily basis to connect with your husband and to keep things juicy. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Um, you know, w one of the things that happens I'll, I'm going to I'm going to answer the question maybe somewhat circu circular. Sure. Cir <laughs> um, I think one of the things that happens when you go on a deep dive, a really deep dive with somebody, and you are actually exposing your messiest. I mean, I cried every day for seven years. I mean, I was not like a pretty, oh. totally in control person as I navigated this train. I was a mess. I was a total mess, and. Um, Prior to that, I had been, you know, kind of a perfectionist. I'm about the opposite of a perfectionist now. Um, but one of the things when you show up in your imperfection with somebody else in, in particular, you suddenly get to experience that you are, I, I discovered I am inherently imperfect, according to my brain's way of defining perfection and wholly lovable. And so is he. And so is he. And it's like, wow, you know, what expectations do I have on another person? What expectations do I have on myself that keeps us from being able to just drop everything and dive into juicy right now? So I don't know, a couple of tricks that I think I discovered along the way was one of them was it's 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 not cheating to schedule time in for sex <laughs> for one i agree i 100 percent agree 
<laughs> we, we, we have this idea to just be the spontaneous, you know, overflowing of something that takes over the moment. I was like, yeah, well, whatever. No, schedule it in. It's just fine. But then once you schedule it in, you have to ask yourself, who's coming to bed? Is it the PTA mom who's coming to bed? You know, is it the is it the solo beach walker who's coming to bed or is it the juicy lover? You've got to bring the juicy to lover to bed. The That's, mindset. The, the mindset, mindset is so key. Yeah. Which is why scheduling, even though it doesn't seem that sexy, <laughs> is so much more sexy because both of the people or whoever you're scheduling to meet, right, is yeah. coming into the experience ready for that moment. Exactly. Um, so you can be fully present. And you mentioned that you make time every morning yes. for connecting physically. Totally. Because, well, one of the things we learned, so as we went on this journey, we, we dove deep into our sexual life, but we also dove deep into meditation. And as you dive deeper into meditation, what you begin to realize, and it's another little bit of a mindset thing, is that you have to, it's not about how much time you spend doing it necessarily. It's about signaling to your body that this is to your body mind that this is a priority in my life. This is something that's a priority. So I always call it making it to the cushion. If you want to be a meditator, don't worry if you meditate for an hour a day, just make it to the cushion for five minutes. And every day, if you can, you know, just set the timer for five minutes. Everybody can find five minutes. Yes. And then with sex, what it dawned on us was what if we really because we had gone through the stages of life of, you know, raising kids and having businesses and, and um, you can schedule it in on whatever, Tuesdays and Thursdays at lunch or something, you know. Um, but as we became empty nesters, we were thinking, well, what if we, what if we did this even more deliberately? What would it look like? What if we were physical together and playful every single morning and so we start every single morning with a coffee <laughs> a coffee cheers is to that <laughs> <laughs> and then we always follow it up with a, a meditation which brings us present and then we gather physically together and we we our bodies know to expect this our bodies revel in it. It might be the only time in the whole day that we have to just be completely silly, juicy, passionate, fucking, for lack of a better word, um, <laughs> together. And it's, it's remarkable. It's like, talk about the value of skin to skin. You know, with yes. newborns, we do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. As 60 year old people, we can do this and we can re revel in it. We can, it's almost like stepping into that warm water. And it's not, you know, we learned long ago that every single uh, sexual experience does not have to culminate in release. It's actually, it actually can be much more playful if it doesn't if you leave the tension high. That's one of the things we learned during that year long training was the, the sort of the cornerstones of a multi-orgasmic response often has to do with getting up there, but not necessarily expending all that energy. Anyway, so that's, that's what our morning routine is. I think you're the first person we've ever told. <laughs> Well, I feel honored that you told me your little secret. Um, yeah. And, um, and you know, I think it's a wonderful practice. And, you know, obviously everyone's going to have to find the time in their own day um, yeah. for connecting. But I think it's a great idea for relationships to really intentionally connect. Um, yeah. Because, you know, the day goes so fast. Yeah. And, you know, even if you don't have anything specifically going on, you know, life just 
whips by in, you know, sec it feels like seconds and the day is over and you can really lose an opportunity to connect. And that can happen over and over and over for years. And, you right. know, yes, you know, we wonder why the divorce rate is 50% for first time, you know, marriages, and it goes mm -hmm. up with second and third marriages as well. So, um, so keeping that together and um, finding the time and really connecting. And I love that you start with meditation because it really does bring you to the present moment and it prepares you for right. what's ahead. So, and we, we close, I was just gonna say, we close every single morning with these words that we learned 30 years ago during that love and ecstasy training, which is, I honor you as an aspect of me, or I honor you as myself. I honor you as myself. And it's a, it's a little tiny reminder of um, the reflection that your partner offers you. I love yourself. that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, as you respect yourself, so too do you respect your partner. So it's yes. like a mutual respect of one another almost in, in what you're saying. So that's yeah, exactly. Really, yeah, that's exactly. Quite beautiful. I love that. Um, so on that note, I'm going to ask you <laughs> what tools <laughs> you bring to the bedroom to make your time together more spicy. And it doesn't have to be a specific toy. Um, it could be whatever. So you just mentioned one you know, one meditating and two, what you say to each other at the end. Yes. But do you have yes. anything else specifically? Because we kind of already touched upon that, but I'm sure there's other things you can expand. Upon. Well, okay. So I, what I, what we bring to the table is, well, we certainly bring presence. We always practice a little bit of soul gazing where it's you're with somebody and not, not in a fancy way, in a playful way. Okay. Um, I like that. <laughs> We bring I mean, laughter is so key. And, you know, I always say that, you know, this is how we adults play, right? Yes. Sex is how adults play. Yes, and so exactly. if you're not being playful and funny and fun and the soul gazing, and I'm guessing that you mean, you know, gazing into each other's eyes. Yes. Is that what you mean by that? Yes. I mm -hmm. mean, that really is a beautiful way to connect. Yes. Yes. Um, we bring Astroglide in. <laughs> Okay, lube, <laughs> to is lube is key. <laughs> to, fa to facilitate, w w if you, we want to have longer sessions or what have you, it's it's helpful to have it. Um, my body gets very naturally juicy still. I'm lucky that way. And we still also use uh, Astroglide. We bring, I think the thing that I would say we bring to the bedroom, and I'm not talking, like my husband doesn't isn't like a jokester kind of guy at all. He's not like that, but where, but where we get playful is in bed and it's creative and it's, it's irreverent, really. It's more like irreverent. It's, it's, mm, it doesn't have to, I think people think that sex has to be um, like pink, cloudy, sensuality uh, you know like like that first moment when you step step into the hot spring but sex can be juicy when it's crass and irreverent and you're playing off different people's ideas of whatever they love to do in bed and you're surrendering i would say one of the greatest things you can you can bring to the bedroom is swapping the the um, experience of surrender surrendering to the other person whatever they want however they want it and swap take turns i love that um energy of you know the dominance and submission that you're playing with your husband yeah and you know that's very much bdsm you know yes. <laughs> and, yeah um, i know yeah and, and 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 you know what sex can be so creative and i definitely always say you know, bring that creative mind to the bedroom. Um, and, you know, for me, sex is sacred. And I believe in sacred sexuality. I do believe that, you know, um, why, you know, sex is a way for us to procreate, right? But why does it feel so good, right? I mean, <laughs> I feel like, you know, someone up there, you know, whoever you believe in, um, gave us this 
really amazing gift of sexuality so that we can really enjoy each other and um, have pleasure in our lives. I okay. wanted to comment on that sacred sexuality. Yes, that go ahead. <clears throat> what I think makes sex sacred is uh, not what you're doing or how you're doing it, but the presence that you bring to it, the attention, the togetherness that you bring to it, the undistracted presence. That's what makes sex sacred. I agree. On that note, I want my <laughs> listeners to be able to find you. So can you tell uh, tell them where they can find you? You can find me um, on almost all social media, not Twitter, <clears throat> at Marika McCandless. <clears throat> my first name, my last name, which is the same as my website. I have a confusing spelling of my name, but there it is. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok a tiny bit, LinkedIn, um, just starting to play with Pinterest. Um, yeah, but mostly my website is a great place to connect with me. Perfect. So look for her there. And I want to mention that you talked about an inner striptease guide. So can you <laughs> tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, a lot of my book is about how to go on an inner striptease. So we're talking about the inner striptease is really, I, I like to say, hmm, going on an inner striptease is not about finding better answers to whatever ails you. It's about asking better questions. So some questions can propel us to a completely different mindset, to a completely different way of being. Um, and those are, that's the cornerstone of my inner striptease uh, guide. It's three transformational questions. One that brings you back to your body, because again, what I truly believe everybody wants is to be present in life. That's why sex is so great, because usually we're present for it. So um, when we're in our body, when we're, when we're in our senses, they only exist right now. We can have all kinds of thoughts that from 30 years ago, what's going to happen in the future, but we can only smell a rose right now have a memory of it. So one is about coming back to the body. The other is about questioning the mind. What is a magic question that helps you question your mind? Because our, uh, our ways of being, our entrenched beliefs, our entrenched thoughts, they can keep us from living life fully. We have to let some stuff go. We have to open up to different ways of being. Even with sex, like maybe you always thought, this is what I love. I uh, This is the only thing I love. I'm never going to love anything else. Maybe that's not true anymore. <laughs> maybe that's try true. something you else. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the final one is to a question to help us investigate the very nature of being, to enter into the mystery of naked being itself. So it's a question that takes us there. I love that. And you have an actual guide that you offer on yes. this site here. So, yep. um, you know, you can go there and click on that link, get, get your inner striptease guide. And I do believe that it's a free, it's a free. freebie, right? It is free. So yes. You can go on there and get your inner striptease guide and, mm -hmm. um, you know, create a, a beautiful experience for yourself as well. Um, and, you know, follow in uh, Marika's footsteps. Um, but and keep in your me own... in the loop. I want to hear about it. <laughs> yes, but in your own way, right? Um, totally. So I love that. Well, I really appreciate you being a guest on my show today. This has been fantastic. Thanks, Eve. I loved it. As a licensed physical therapist, I treat conditions of the pelvic floor and sexual health conditions. And I want to make sure that you can reach me if you are interested in any of the services that I provide. So I'm going to just pop my website here and you can go to pleaseme.online and find me there. Uh, I do uh, treatment for erectile dysfunction. I also do treatment for decreased vaginal uh, sensitivity and dryness, incontinence, painful sex, and many other conditions that affect our sensual lives. So please reach out to me if that is you. 
I also want to mention too that I started in February a orgasm revolution that is bringing awareness to the orgasm gap. And I also uh, would love to have you join me on that um, as well. So if you have any questions about uh, the orgasm revolution, please go to pleaseme.online and you can find all of the information there. Please join me on my orgasm revolution. Uh, I guess that's it for this time. Until next time. Visit pleaseme.online to reach Eve or for more information on products to increase blood flow and overall health. For her curated list of her favorite toys, and for swag that shows that you are a big fan. Please consider supporting the show.